processing an image in PixInsight, images can go through a lot of operations and transformations. Sometimes you may not like where you're ending up with your processing and you wish you could go back to a previous point in time. Sometimes it's nice to go back to a previous point in time and grab a copy of that image so that you can try an alternative processing path and see if that seems to look nicer. Sometimes it's nice to remember what parameters were used in a previous process that you applied in your imaging chain. One simple way to do that is to use the undo and redo buttons at the top of the menu. I have here uh, a copy of my Malat 15 image, and this is an SHO color image um, in the nonlinear space in a very early portion of its processing. Um, and when I choose that image and make it active, I can go back and do some undos. And as I do that, I'll step to previous versions of the image and I can go with the redo button and that will bring me back to where we were. But there's a nicer way to do this kind of navigation. If you do a right click on the identifier tab of your image, you'll see the load history explorer. And when we load that, we get a nice little window that pops up. Uh, this will disappear on you if, you if you're not careful, but you can tell it to stick. And I think for our cases, we can also tell it that uh, we will, we'd like this to be a floating window. So now we have a floating window in here. And here is the image we're dealing with. And here's a complete history of the processing that's occurred for this particular image. And I have the opportunity to explore that a bit. Right now, you'll see that there's an there's a arrow in the last image. This is indicating the version of the image which is displayed in the frame here. But I can go back and double click and I'm going to see earlier versions of that image. And I can take that back to where the image started. In this case, it was the very first instance of the SHO image in a nonlinear space. So this gives me the opportunity to go anywhere that I'd like to go. And at that point in time, if I wish, I can make a copy of that image. Now I can tuck this away and I can say, hey, here's a starting point if I wanted to try an alternative processing path to the one I was doing here. So that's pretty handy. Another thing you can do as you're exploring what processing you, that image has gone through is when you're looking at a particular process, you can see if a mask was being applied at the time. In this case, there are no masks, but had I a mask applied here, I would have the name of the mask indicated. It also shows you what parameters. This was the SCNR function. Uh, we're working on the green layer and we're using an amount of 0.75. So that gives me an idea of what was being done and what parameters were being done. The other thing you can do with this, which is pretty handy, is at any given point, you can double click on this process and suddenly I'll have a new instantiated version of that process with the parameters already filled in. So now I can use this to process an image again if I wanted to, or if I wanted to, I can also drag this here, rename it. Uh, we'll call this SENR Green. And now I have a process icon that I can save and reapply to other images if I choose to do that. So the History Explorer is a handy way to step back in time, look at different versions of the image, see how the image evolved through the processing steps, grab copies of the image at certain points of the processing, uh, and to also reinstantiate what functions were used and what your parameters were for those functions. Very handy.